the Super Bowl last Thursday, the Fox debate, Rand Paul should have launched on all on all guns. I, and that's yeah. my opinion. I just think that he missed one heck of an opportunity. I just hope he gets another at that level. But, uh, you know, I don't think Donald Trump's going to miss many more debates. So he may not have as good an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I do think this, based on the attendance that we've seen, Matt and I have been going to a lot of events. And Rand Paul had a terrific turnout the other night in Iowa City um, on uh, Saturday night. Oh, we'll have yeah. to see. We'll have to see what happens. Let me ask you, uh, Richard, can you can you pop in and out of uh, the uh, of the caucuses there? You said there's a Democrat caucus there at that school. Is it possible for you to leave this one and get into there a little bit and give us a, a view of what's going on with that? Supposedly they've locked the doors. I oh, can check. Okay. And, uh, okay. I, I check it. I will text you guys. I will let you know via text. Okay. I guess once they get into it and they start yelling and screaming and doing the uh, Chicago Well, they got to be able to, uh, they don't want anyone else coming in and saying, well, wait, you were just in this group and now. Yeah. Yeah. They got to keep them separated. <laughs> yeah. It's a very different, very different type of uh, approach between the two different parties when they caucus, I guess, reflecting the, the character of the two different parties. I want, I want to take a look uh, real quickly at uh, how relevant this has been to who goes on to win out of the two parties for a few elections going back here. Guys, get that uh, Fred Thompson clip thing uh, ready to run. When we look at the Democrats, of course, um, we had Obama win in 2008 with 38 percent. Hillary Clinton came in third with 29.5 percent. Before that, uh, John Kerry, who went on to win the nomination, won Iowa. Uh, before that, Al Gore did it. So for the Democrats, it seems to be pretty uh, consistent that the ones who win uh, the Iowa caucus have gone on. Uh, the exceptions were 1992, where uh, an Iowa Senator Harkin got 77 percent of the vote. And of course, you know, he was a a home senator, so that's that's to be expected. Uh, Bill Clinton only got 3%. Wow. <laughs> uh, he came in third and only got 3%. Uh, in 1988, uh, Gephardt uh, got 31%, Paul Simon 27 and Dukakis, who was in third place at 22, went on to get the nomination. But when you look at the rest of these, uh, Mondale, Carter, they overwhelmingly won the Iowa caucus on the Democrat side. So Iowa is predominantly Democrat, and the winners, for the most part, have uh, gone on to win the nomination, and in many cases, the presidency uh, out, of, out of Iowa. Now, we look at the Republicans. Of course, we had that uh, train wreck in 2012 where we were told that uh, Romney had won it. Then we were told that Santorum had won it. Uh, I, I really believe that Ron Paul did. I always believe that he did. But nevertheless, uh, that was a train wreck then. When we look back in 2008, uh, Huckabee won. Uh, McCain came in fourth place, he even came in behind Fred Thompson. Now, Fred Thompson, many of you may remember, he, he just died uh, this last fall in his uh, mid-70s. He had been uh, a lawyer with uh, Nixon. Uh, he had been a lawyer in real life. He'd become a senator, an actor. You've seen him in uh, Law and & Order and a lot of other things. And then he was running in 2008. And here's a little back, uh, uh, back room negotiation. I said they're shooting the commercial. Uh, this is how it looked with uh, Fred Thompson. Fred Thompson, take one. I'm Fred Thompson. I support a woman's right to choose. Cut! Fred, baby! You're not lobbyist anymore, and you're not running for the Senate either. <laughs> 2008! Fred Thompson, take 24. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fred Thompson. While I may not have been in Vietnam, I was in the hunt for Red October. Cut! <laughs> okay, uh, Fred, uh, why don't we try uh, national security? Fred Thompson, take 53. I'm Fred Thompson, and I sometimes vote against illegal immigration. Cut! Uh, all right, Freddie boy, uh, let's just try your uh, Senate voting too. record. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm yeah. Fred Thompson, and I voted 13 times against handguns. Cut! And I've made over one million dollars in lobbying fees. Cut! And take 729. I'll have connections to Nixon during the million dollars. Cut! Uh, maybe in 2008 we should just uh, keep it simple. I'm Fred Thompson. And that's something worth thinking about. Cut and print. print. And that's a cartoon worth seeing. Well, that's, you you know, that's that pretty... Uh, Was that his slogan? <laughs> pretty accurate for most like politicians. Like Jed yeah. and I earned it. Yeah, you could pretty much transfer that to <laughs> many of the people who are running in either party. Uh, just finally get back to, I'm Fred Thompson, and that's something to think <laughs> that's about. Something yep. to think about. Is like, and that's what a lot of this is. A lot of this is the appeal of personality as opposed to their position on issues, because just like you saw with Fred Thompson, uh, you can't really tell which party this guy is in because he doesn't know himself, right? Pretty much, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Uh, when we look at the rest of the Republicans, some of the surprises that came in were 
Like in 1996, Bob Dole, who went on to win the nomination, uh, narrowly beat Pat Buchanan. Uh, you had uh, uh, Bob Dole winning in 88, and uh, George H.W. Bush came in third place, quite a bit behind him. Dole uh, got 37, uh, Bush got 19, and Pat Robertson beat George H.W. Bush. That's the strength of the Christian voting bloc in Iowa. And then going back to 1980, uh, Bush beat Reagan by 2%, uh, 32% to 30%. So that was a kind of a wake-up call for Reagan, but he did recover and went on to uh, win the presidency. So uh, do we have some updates on the votes that are coming through? So we have the Huffington Post here. We can see uh, the numbers keep changing rapidly, but right now we see Ted Cruz is in the lead over Donald Trump, and Hillary has a lead over Bernie Sanders. Martin O'Malley's not doing too well, but, you know, of course, this is very early in the uh, in the polling numbers so we'll see how the thing develops as time goes on and the reason we're seeing those different numbers there is because what's reported on the republican side is the actual number of votes so right now even because it's early uh, we're seeing like 1200 votes for uh, trump and cruz each but on the on the democrat side we're seeing 97 and 86 those are actually the delegates so what they do is caucus by caucus they decide how many delegates are going to apportion to each one of the, the candidates, and that's what they, they uh, phone up. So, Well, we have uh, some, some concerns with how they're actually saying that the delegates that are there, um, the Sanders campaign was saying that there was a possibility that the Clinton campaign was planning to pack the caucuses with people uh, who weren't even from that area. And, um, like people from Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> that's what's coming in the general IP, election. Because all they need is a warm body there. Uh, but this is... Um, a resident who said he received an alarming letter that that urged him to caucus for Clinton and identified a non-resident as his local precinct captain, captain who now they're concerned that they're just kind of bringing in warm bodies to yeah. have hey the guys, caucus. You know, my grandmother was a Republican until the day she died, and then she started voting Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Darren. Uh, uh, according to the, uh, I'm, I'm looking at Microsoft's crystal ball. It is still correct. They have Hillary up ahead of Sanders, but mm -hmm. it's closer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I guess the behind way, us, we're on getting the, some on the back wall feed is, of. They're counting the votes here. Okay. Yeah, we've That's got a live doing. feed from uh, Richard Reeves, who is at one of the Iowa caucus locations on the Republican side. They are. Uh, slipping uh, ballots into boxes right now. That's the way they do it there, as opposed to having a um, uh, kind of a Chicago uh, commodities exchange <laughs> for the candidates. I'll trade you uh, one Hillary for two Sanders or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, What's the going rate for Hillary? That's what they ought to be saying. How I many? mean, that's, but this is a really interesting thing, though. If you think if they're just uh, getting people there from out of state to come in and participate in the caucus... This is the same argument that people have about not requiring an ID to vote mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you can you you can vote multiple times. You don't have to you vote for other people. Yeah, you, yeah, it's you, interesting. You can be dead. <laughs> it, it does it does bring up that question. There was one thing that came out today that I thought was kind of interesting, and you know, one person we haven't talked about is poor Jeb. You know, they, he earned that. He uh, earned that Jeb, he earned Didn't he just uh, think this into was, the abyss yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that uh, came out of the Free Republic. And uh, basically, it was a picture of uh, a flyer saying, Earn fast cash today. Seat fillers needed today, February 1st at 12 p.m. for campaign event. $25 per hour, two hours max. Bring your friends. First come, first serve. Please be prompt. And uh, for more information, contact the Jeb Bush people. Now, that may have been quite, very, very likely was a uh, a hoax. A, a hoax, yeah, exactly. But I tell you, it really did catch the zeitgeist of the Jeb Bush campaign. <laughs> they say they think it might have been done by uh, somebody in the Rubio campaign. They had they traced it back to that. And that kind of fits with Rubio, too, because the two of them have really been going after each other. Uh, yeah. Jeb, very angry that uh, he's blown through basically his trust fund uh, that was uh, put out there by all these uh, bigwig uh, uh, GOP uh, these GOP donors. Who are we going to throw to? Uh, we're going to we're going to go to. Uh, let's go to a break. You want to at eight. At eight. Okay, <laughs> we're going to take a break at eight. And there was also a uh, a picture that came up. See if you guys can pull this up on the monitor frame by watching the feed here. Uh, we've got uh, the one and only wedding picture of Jeb Bush on the big day, and <laughs> it's pretty pretty <laughs> amusing to look at this picture. If you guys can pull this up or at least get a shot. 
of the desk there. There you go. There's uh, that's Jeb Bush <laughs> on his wedding day. Okay. <laughs> oh wow. He put that on Facebook today. Uh, that was his 41st anniversary. And he says that's the only picture he's got of his wedding. And the story that he gives, reason for it, he says, is because Brother Marvin was the photographer. And Brother Marvin accidentally re-rolled from a Frank Zappa concert and took the pictures, uh, you know, double exposed it, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe... Wow. Maybe uh, Jeb, in a fit of anger, destroyed all the other copies after yeah. he saw this one. I don't know. And he's like, I well, don't want the evidence out there. That's a great, beautiful thing with film, though, is he could have had, like, a Zappa filter. They should put that new filter yeah. for Instagram. Yeah, exactly. It might have looked cooler if uh, Zappa was standing there in the picture. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that it was Marvin because, you know, brother Marvin, you don't hear too much about Marvin and Neil. You know, Neil was involved in the savings and loan scandal. Uh, Marvin is the one that you, you really don't hear much about. He was the guy who was head of security at the trade centers up until 9:10, and then somehow he just miraculously was replaced the day before all this stuff happened they what? took brother marvin out yeah Wait, exactly this is breaking so. news for me <laughs> really <laughs> that's right yeah oh brother marvin and, no and she, i always no can i mean you, that's <laughs> uh, a yeah. huge conspiracy there we had jeb bush always saying that Bush's you know they brother. called him Vito corleone because he vetoed so many bills in florida and everything i said no jeb they're calling you fredo you know, everybody knows the Godfather story. But it, it might be that, uh, you know, Marvin is, is truly the Fredo. I, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Even uh, messed up. Oh, the which you just keep on coming. Yeah. yeah. They just keep going. Uh, but, of course, as, as he's fallen by the wayside, Goldman Sachs is putting their money on a different horse. And that looks like uh, Marco Rubio is the one who's picking up most of the money from Goldman Sachs as uh, Jeb Bush is fading into the... Uh, the rest of the pack, they said there's been a 50% jump in uh, money given by Goldman Sachs uh, to Marco Rubio. And, of course, they gave him over $107,000, uh, Goldman Sachs empl uh, employees, in the first uh, quarter of the year. Uh, they say that they had given $773,000 to Bush's campaign committee. So, you know, he's, he's pulled in huge Well, that alone is, is pretty suspect if you get that much money from Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, did he report it, though? <laughs> well, that's what it, that, that is what's reported, yeah. <laughs> so we don't really know what the grand total is, but that's what's right. been reported. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, as the New York Times points out today, the, they're, they're starting to align between the, um, the donors, the big donors of the Republican Party, are starting to align either between, behind Rubio or Ted Cruz. Rubio had uh, been rumored to have won the Sheldon Adelson primary. That's mm -hmm. a... A primary. Sheldon Adelson is the large casino operator out in Nevada. He was the one, if you remember, four years ago when they had the Nevada caucus. He was, that was on a Friday, let's see, it was on a Saturday night, was it? I think Friday night or Saturday night. Anyway, it was on a night when uh, Jewish people couldn't go. Sheldon Adelson's major issue is uh, to stamp out uh, online gaming, uh, gaming, but then behind that, he wants to support Israel. I mean, he is a full on Zionist. And so, he, he pulled his strings with the Nevada Republican Party and said, we're going to organize a conference for Jews only on Sunday or whatever. And so there were a lot of people who are not Jewish who also couldn't attend on the night that it had originally been scheduled. Mm. And they came in to vote there and said, nope, you have to be Jewish to do this. I mean, it, wow. it was pretty, pretty amazing pretty strict, that they yeah. tried to enforce that and tell Ron Paul uh, supporters who had had to work that other night that they couldn't come in and, and vote on that second night. And he gave $10 million in the last cycle to Newt Gingrich. Uh, he was the one that they put their money on in the last cycle. But it's been reported that they now want to uh, uh, back either uh, Marco Rubio, but then as he started to sag and as uh, crew started to move up, they said, well, maybe Sheldon will support uh, Rubio and maybe his wife will support Cruz. So we'll see what happens. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue with uh, some of the updates. They're starting to come in pretty quickly now, the uh, returns from the, two, from the caucus uh, locations. So we're going to come back with that. We're also going to come back with some more clips from interviews that we've had with Donald Trump. That uh, Alex Jones has interviewed him as well as Rand Paul. And within, I think it's been last month or so, we've had a couple yes. of uh, right. interviews with him. So we're going to have some excerpts from that when we come back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Clean, pure, 
your drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water.